All right, so we've got Zoom, Instagram, and Facebook all going at the same time. See if anybody shows up. We're here to do probably about a 30 minute meditation uh, for dealing with difficult emotions, which might be a reality for every human on the planet right now in some way, shape, or form. So I invite you to get comfy. And um, we're gonna be here for about 30 minutes or maybe 45, so really get comfy. Make sure you're supported in any way physically that you need to be, need blankets or cushions, water, anything like that. And just go ahead and get yourself comfy. Close your eyes. Take a couple deep breaths in through your nose, out through your mouth. With every inhale, think about pulling all of your pieces back to you. So during times of trauma, during times of stress, we have a tendency to send out little pieces of ourselves, sometimes to other people, sometimes to situations, sometimes we just leave things behind because we're so external, we're looking outwards. We're looking at our phones, we're looking at our computers, the TV, uh, the people around us, Maybe we've been in protests over the last week. Maybe you've left little pieces of yourself all over the place, checking in with friends, making sure that loved ones are okay. So just take a second and with each inhale, think about pulling all of those pieces back to you. And set that intention that for the next 30 minutes or so, every inhale is going to be pulling back pieces of you, pulling back energy. Starting to turn that outward gaze inwards. And then with each exhale, cleansing ourselves. So letting go of the things that are no longer serving us, letting go of the things that we have picked up, whether we've been out in the streets protesting or in our homes watching things or just at work or dealing with our kids. We take on other people's energy. We hold pain for other people. We want to protect the people around us. We hold their pain. We hold their emotions. We do the work for them. So using our exhales to let that stuff go. Let other people's energy go, let other people's emotions. Let the energy and emotions that are yours that are not serving you go. Let the beliefs that are not serving you go. We're in a full moon cycle right now, which is a amazing and blessed time to let go of things. So with every exhale, set the intention that you clear out what is no longer in your highest and best interest, what is no longer serving you. Letting go of the things that keep you tethered to a specific vibration or a specific belief. So we inhale, we call back the pieces of us that we have given away, had taken from us, left somewhere, forgotten. And we exhale, 
and let go of all the things we've collected that are not ours or are not serving us any longer. Setting those intentions, doing the work with every breath. And bring your hands to your heart center, just putting one hand over the other, top of your heart. Meditation and any sort of inward exploration starts, ends, and does everything in the heart. We like to let the mind come in, but this is a heart-focused practice. It is an act of coming home to yourself. And a meditation can be something as short as a single breath or as long as forever, really. So just bringing your awareness into this space and under your hands, into your heart center, See if you can feel your heart beating and under your hands, if you can feel your heart beating inside your body. And I'm going to invite you to come home to this place whenever the mind wants to take over, whenever it wants to attach itself to something, whether it's a physical discomfort or an emotional discomfort. Keep coming home to your heart. And this is really all you need for this entire practice. It's when we leave our heart, when we leave ourself, that we become discomfortable, diseased with the world around us or with reality. Because when we are feeling that discomfort, when we are feeling that dis-ease, we are in resistance to what is. We are in resistance to reality. Take a second to come home to your heart, to come home to your reality. And understand that your reality is very different from everyone's reality around you. And the only thing that you can change is your own reality and your reaction to your reality. Meaning you have to do the work on yourself first. Because if we are always reacting instead of receiving, then we're never coming home. We're never processing our emotions. We're never shifting our beliefs. And we can't actually go out into the world and change anything until we do the work here in our own hearts first. And then when you do that work, you set that example for the world around you. You start living the meditation. You start living the prayer and other people see it. That vibration rubs off on others and it helps lift others up. And we are seeing so much ugliness in the world right now. So much hatred, so much fear. So much violence. We have to first address all of those things within ourselves. And that is difficult work.
It is incredibly powerful work. Because if I can go inside myself and I can face all of the really ugly pieces of myself, all the places where I harbor hatred, where I harbor fear, if I can look those in the face and I can hold them close, just like you would a child who is fearful or angry. If I can love and accept those pieces in myself, then I can go out in the world and I can spread that love. So find something right now that is challenging you. Find the feeling behind it, find the emotion. So don't let it just be something that's external from you. A person, a thing, a situation, a belief, someone else's belief. Dig under that, go deeper. And find that feeling in your body. Find that emotion. And go past even labeling it. And just feel it. What does it feel like in your cells? What does it feel like coursing through the veins of your body? And then see if you can go deeper and let go of the descriptive words of what it feels like and just experience it. Every time that brain wants to jump in, have a say in it, just come back to your breath, come back to the feeling. So we're taking something that's external from us. We're digging down into the emotion of it and then we're taking that even deeper and going into the sensation and we're going past what words can describe as that sensation into just pure feeling, pure experience. And you may find a desire to push away from it. It's not comfortable, it's not pretty. If you keep pushing it away, you're never going to be able to accept it. You're never going to be able to transcend it. It's always going to own you. It's going to run your heart. It's going to run your mind. Go ahead and imagine that this, this sensation is inside of a younger aspect of you. So your inner child. Make that child below the age of seven. So separating yourself for a second from yourself. Picturing this younger aspect of you, this child version of you. And let them hold that sensation, let them hold that emotion. Children are so beautiful at being able to express things without all of the crap that we adults have, all the filters, all the experiences. They just, they're just sad. They're just angry. They're just hurting. So imagine your younger self having this, this feeling, this sensation running through their body, this emotion running through their body. 
and just let them react. Let them scream, let them cry, let them punch things. Let them scream as loud as they need to. Let them say all of the things that they need to say. And just sit there and hold space for their experience. Hold space for your experience. And keep coming back to your breath, calling in with the inhale, those pieces that have been taken from you or abandoned or given away. Exhaling, releasing those pieces that are not yours or are not serving you. Stay with this breath as you experience these emotions running through this younger aspect of yourself. Just witness, witness and breathe. And if this is your first time dealing with any form of inner child work, this might be really challenging. Just stay with your breath on this. Every time the mind wants to take over, come back to your heart, come back to your breath. And if you're well versed at this inner child work, you may have already gone through this emotion, this feeling, this sensation. And you're more than welcome to pull up another version of yourself and do it with another sensation or another emotion. But you want to make sure that if you are doing that, you keep all, all of your younger aspects in front of you. And you're going to stay with this younger aspect of yourself until it's done. Just holding space, observing, staying present with your breath and allowing that emotion, that sensation to play itself out however it needs to. You're creating a safe space.
And if your inner child is still temper tantruming, let them continue to temper tantrum as long as they need to. And for those of us that have temper tantrumed out, You want to ask your younger aspect what they need from you. Do they want a hug? Do they want you to hold their hand? Do they want you to be left alone? So this is some of the greatest love work that you can do for yourself or for anybody is to ask what they need and just hold space. So years ago, I was working in a group with one of my teachers and one of my, my fellow students was crying. They were processing some things and someone in the circle grabbed a box of tissues and handed it to them. And my teacher stopped and said, don't you dare do that. That is violent, which took all of us by shock. I'm just trying to help, you know, they're crying, they're snotting all over the place, just the ugly cry. I wanna help them, I wanna give them a tissue. And my teacher said, do you, you want to give them that tissue to make yourself feel better, to make yourself less uncomfortable with what's happening right now, with the pain that you're witnessing, with the messiness that you're with, missing or you're witnessing? Or do you truly want to help this person? And how do you know that that's what they need when you reach out and, and try to offer your help? You're interrupting their process of grieving. You're interrupting their process of being present with their own pain. You're stopping them from being able to move through whatever it is they're moving through. So the greatest gift that you can give to yourself and to the people that you love and just the people around you is to give them the space to emote, to have whatever emotion it is that they're having, to move through it and to just hold space. Allow them the space to ask for what they need. And when that opening becomes apparent when they are kind of in a space of being self-soothed, when they're quieting, it's an opportunity to ask what they need. Is there anything I can do for you? What do you want from me? And to take whatever it is that they, they reply and, uh, and give it to them. Even if that means nothing, I don't want you to do anything. I want you to sit there and I want you to shut up. Then you sit there and you shut up. You hold that space and you breathe and you stay in your heart. And you don't take it personal because it has nothing to do with you. You are not that important. You need to let them grieve. And the same goes for this process with yourself. You're sitting here, you're holding space for yourself. You don't have to do what you think you need to do, what society has told you you need to do, what's expected of you by the people around you. You don't have to do that. You can just sit here and hold space and then ask yourself, what do you need? And then you get to give that to yourself. 
And the more you can do that within yourself, the more you can do that to others, and the more you're going to be able to voice that to other people. So that when you are in a place where you're breaking down and someone else is holding space for you and they ask you what you need, you can actually tell them or you can get past any shame or guilt that you're feeling while you're ugly crying and you can ask for the help that you need. We're not in this alone but we believe we are because we've abandoned ourselves, because we've taken these younger aspects of ourselves and we have, we've told them to fuck off. You don't get to feel that way. No, this is uncomfortable. I don't wanna, no, I resist this. The truth is when you resist the ugly pieces you resist the beautiful pieces as well and you'll never experience both so how do you deal with difficult emotions how do you deal with uncomfortable truths how do you deal with physical discomfort from sitting in massage or in a meditation now for 27 minutes. You just sit with it. You just watch it. I'm trying to shift away from using the word hard. But something is hard because there's very little in in this world that's hard. Most things are easy, you just have to decide to do it. But things are really fucking uncomfortable. And if we can just be present with that discomfort, present with those sensations, present with those emotions, if we can take them outside of us and look at them, if we can put them inside a version of ourselves that's younger, that's a child that's innocent, it's pure. And we can let them be, and we can nurture them and we can love them and we can hold them close when they need to be held close and we give them space when they need to be given space. And everything is just fucking easy, man. It's never gonna be less uncomfortable, but it is going to be so much easier. When we can sit with that discomfort, then we can respond to the world around us instead of react. We can stay grounded in moments of trauma. We can make different choices when under stress. We can fuck up and still love ourselves. And we can learn from those fuck ups because we're not so busy pushing them away that we miss the beautiful gift that they are. The world is on fire and it is a mother fucking gift. It is a gift. And if you are busy fighting it, you are missing this opportunity, this amazing wrapped present moment. Go inside, unpack it within yourself. Find all those little juicy tidbits that are pissing you off, that are uncomfortable, that are ugly, that are bitter, that are hateful. 
that are bigoted, that are racist, that are sexist, that are violent. Sit with that shit. Pull it close, make it your friend. Understand it. Because if you keep resisting it, it is going to keep coming back and it's going to keep coming back bigger and bigger and bigger. And you don't need sage or crystals or palo santo or exorcisms. You need your heart and you need your breath. You don't need someone to come in and clear you. You don't need a priest. You don't even need God because you are God. You've been given that gift when you were born. Be in your heart. You want to call in positivity? Breathe in. You want to release negativity? Breathe out. That's all you need. These tools, the sage, palo santo, crystals, holy water, these are just symbols. They're just rituals that we do to make ourselves feel better. But you don't need any of that. You've got it right under your hands right now. You've got it right in your lungs. Inhale the light. Exhale the dark. Thankful that you can breathe. Breathe for those people that cannot breathe anymore. Take a second, ask that child how you can make them feel loved today. What do they need from you to feel loved? Ask them what they need to feel safe. And don't let the mind start running away with this, just like you would with a child. Kneel down with them. What can I do? Now, what can the world do? What can I do to make you feel loved, to make you feel safe? Listen, and then give that to yourself. Thank this younger aspect of yourself for being here, for showing up, for being honest, for being innocent being in their body, in their emotions. Thank yourself for holding space to do this. This is uncomfortable work, but it gets easier. And you can stay here and you can do this as long as you need to. If you found this really helpful, there are two, 
three meditations on my YouTube channel. So if you go to my YouTube channel, it's Holistic Mojo. Um, one is called the Inner Child Meditation, which is a lot of what we just did. One is just a few weeks old. It's called the Grief Case, and that's dealing with a little bit more of the physical stuff. Um, and then there's an evening meditation on there also um, that is for clearing out. That is really helpful during these trying times for clearing yourself out at the end of the day or clearing yourself out at any point um, after you've seen something intense or you felt something intense, just a way to clear yourself out. Um, so those are those are available to you on YouTube. Um, if you are kind of a regular, a regular subscriber to me, and you um, typically come and do yoga or meditation with me via Zoom or any of these online platforms, and you typically donate to me, I ask that in lieu of that today, you go and donate to Black Lives Matter cause. Um, if you're new, if you've never seen me before, if you got a lot out of this and you'd like to get more information about when I do things like this, you can always go to my website, holisticmojo.com, and you can sign up at the top. There's a little bar to so sign up for my newsletter. I send out weekly newsletters. Um, every week is a different video, whether it's yoga, meditation, um, herbal body things, food things all sorts of stuff every week something goes out typically on Monday but uh, sometimes it doesn't happen till Wednesday so thank you guys so much for showing up for this meditation this evening I thank you so much for doing this difficult uncomfortable work of connecting into yourself and being present with just all the shit we pick up every day, all the beliefs we pick up that aren't ours every day, all the things that have been taught to us. The work starts in here, it starts in your heart, it starts inside of you. You fix this and the world's gonna change. So thank you guys so much. Appreciate your presence and your energy so, so, so much. Namaste.